In this video, you're gonna learn how to process payments in Salesforce. So this will be helpful, for example, when you want to send someone an email with a pay now button, or you wanna be able to collect recurring payments for your subscription business. Other examples could be, you know, collecting installment payments for your project, collecting weekly payments for your cleaning business. These are all things that you can do inside of Salesforce. My name is Micaiah and I'm from Chargent. So why should you process payments in Salesforce? Well, you wanna do this because it lowers the number of total systems that your business has to deal with. Processing payments inside of Salesforce means that you can expose it to your customers through a Salesforce community. And you know, that's gonna be hard to do in a lot of other systems. Also, when you process payments in Salesforce, it's easier for your team to access the data and make decisions based upon that data. And this can be very, very challenging in a number of different ways you could set up your business. So before you begin, you should know that the technical definition of payment processing, it's to move money from one bank account to another bank account. And usually that's from a consumer or a customer's bank account, and that's to the business bank account that's trying to take money for the goods and services that they've sold. And so what we're talking about here is actually enabling your staff, your partners, and your customers to interact with payment data inside of Salesforce so that that payment can be collected. Do you wanna learn more about Salesforce and payments? Well, if so, we have made a special checklist just for you. And it's on the 10 ways to make Salesforce payments safe, easy, and profitable. So get that link in the description below. So in order to collect payments inside of Salesforce, you're gonna to need to have a few things. And one of them is a merchant account. You could use your current merchant account if you already have one. If you don't already have one, then we here at Chargent, we could help you get one. Also, you'll need a payment gateway and that's gonna front end the merchant account. And there are several entities involved in making that happen, but it doesn't have to be complicated. So if you do have a problem, we can help you straighten it out. Here are the steps. Step one. Ensure that you've got credentials to log into your test gateway. Step number two, install Chargent into your Salesforce org. And step number three, use the Chargent Gateway Setup Wizard to set up that gateway inside of Salesforce. And step number four is use the Chargent Payment Request Setup Wizard to get your payment request site ready. Step number five is test all of this by running some tests in your system. And step number six is customize this to meet your processes. Step number seven is train your staff on the new system. Hey Salesforce customers, we have found that payment processing, it's often a drag on your bottom line. And it's a common problem for businesses of all types. Here at Chargent, we know that we can save you money when processing payments. I'm Micaiah from Chargent, and we've created a checklist that gives you 10 tips on how you can save money when you take payments inside of Salesforce. Tip number one to save money on payments is you need to stop taking paper checks. Checks, they've got hidden costs and they are very expensive to process. And the cost, it doesn't go down the more checks that you take. A survey of financial professionals, it showed that checks take a median of $1.50 to accept and process. So to put that in perspective, if you're a large organization that takes in, let's say 20,000 checks per month, that's gonna be $360,000 per year in costs that do not add any value to your organization. Right now, I'm inviting you to download our checklist, 10 ways to save money on your Salesforce payments. So click the link to find out more now. And remember, at Chargent, we are always here to help. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up the gateways that are native to the Salesforce billing application. In the video before this one in this series, I begged you to stop taking paper checks. I said it a few times. Please stop the madness. Missed it? No worries. We put a link in the description for you so you can check it out. And now that you've realized that paper checks are bad, you might be asking, if we shouldn't use those old paper checks, then what exactly should we be using? And the simple answer is that you should be using digital payments. Now, as a Salesforce billing customer, you have quite a few options to take digital payments. And in this video, we're only gonna be talking about the ones that are native to the Salesforce billing system. Before we jump into the connectors, uh, just a quick note on a very important digital payment method. Your organization should be considering a move to electronic bank draft payments. 
These systems are ACH here in the US, EFT up in Canada, SEPA in Europe, and then Direct Debit in Australia and in the UK. Systems like these, they exist globally in almost every country. And these systems allow your organization to take very large payments, literally up to millions of dollars for very small fees and do it all digitally. Sometimes these can be low as a dollar per transaction. Again, check out the description to get a bit more information on these things. Okay, now that we know that electronic bank transfers should be part of your quiver, let's talk about card payments. Let's dive into the pros and cons, as well as show you how to use the native connectors that come with Salesforce billing. When I say out of the box or native gateway connectors, I'm talking about the four e-commerce gateways that Salesforce billing supports as part of their platform offering. Now you might be saying, hey, you know what? I've been a Salesforce customer for a long time and you don't often see them do integrations. You'd be absolutely right. So why do these even exist? Where did they come from? Well, you may know that Salesforce billing, it was originally a product called Invoiceit. Uh, Invoiceit was based in the UK and the company was bought by another company called Steelbrick. This was back in 2015. So not much longer after that, Steelbrick in turn, they were bought by Salesforce. Then in 2019, after investing significantly in this product, Salesforce released it again, is what we now know as Salesforce billing. And since Invoiceit had implemented four of the most popular gateways globally, Salesforce simply kept those integrations. Those four gateways are Authorize.net and Cybersource. You may know that both of those, they're owned by Visa. And then there is First Data's PayEasy, uh, which is pretty popular here in the US. And then of course, an old standby, which is currently owned and operated by PayPal, called PayFlow Pro. Again, those four are Auth.net, Cybersource, PayEasy, and PayFlow Pro. In the description of this video, you'll also find links to all of these gateways. If you're going to use one of these four gateways, then there are just a few quick steps that you need to do. And this is how to use them. First, get your authentication credentials for the gateway. Then add the remote site settings for the payment gateway and also create the custom settings. Next, add a payment gateway record inside of the Salesforce billing setup. And finally, run a test transaction. That's it, you're off to the races. Once you've done the simple setup for these out of the box gateways, all of the payment user interfaces inside of Salesforce billing are gonna be ready for you to use. So how do I log payments, you might be thinking. Well, if you're using all of the built-in functions inside of Salesforce billing, they've already taken care of it for you. There's nothing else you need to do. It doesn't matter which payment functions that you're using. If you're using Payment Center or Payment Sites, hosted card payments, or maybe just doing payment runs, issuing credits, or applying refunds, it's all integrated and ready for you to use out of the box. It is really quite simple. Whichever payment feature you use, the system will automatically create the payment and the payment allocation records. These records, they manage the business of saying how much was paid and to which invoice it belongs. How to use the out of the box payment gateways with Salesforce billing. If you need to use a gateway that is not one of the four that we mentioned, that's where charging comes in. We have written our gateway connector to enable you to use our 30 plus gateway integrations. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a Salesforce partner community and add payments to it for a quick proof of concept using standard components. My name is Stacy, and I'm from Chargent. If you are a Salesforce admin or consultant who wants to learn about payments and be a superstar for your organization, then you are in the right place. And by the way, we've made a special checklist for you on 10 ways to make Salesforce payments safe, easy, and profitable. So check that link in the description below. For this configuration, you can use the Charge in Anywhere component to take payments and set recurring payments from the Deals tab. These are your opportunities in Salesforce Partner Community. The cool thing is this works just like when you are in opportunities in Salesforce as an internal user and is pretty straightforward to configure with this guide. So here are the steps. Step one, lightning bolt. We are going to start with the lightning bolt template Partner Central. You can find that on the Salesforce App Exchange under the Lightning Bolt section. Salesforce Lightning Bolts are industry solution templates built by Salesforce and partners 
helping you to get going with communities faster. Step number two, sharing settings. There are quite a few sharing settings that need to be configured in order to expose certain Salesforce data in your partner community, allow updating, and allow chargent payments to process. Okay, sharing settings and org-wide defaults. Sharing settings allow you to determine who can access information within your Salesforce org. External access for communities allows those outside the org in communities to access specific information that you control. The following sharing settings need to be set in order to set up payments in the partner community. Some settings should always be kept as private while others are controlled by the parent object. For leads, the external access should be set to private for the account object, in other words, customers, and contract, the external access should be set to private. For contacts, the external access should be set to controlled by parent. For opportunities, in other words, deals, the external access should be set to private. For charge and orders, the external access should be set to private. Gateways, external access should be set to public read only. And for transactions, external access should be controlled by parent. Step three, required licenses. For this to work, you will need the following licenses installed and assigned. A Salesforce partner community license, all three Chargent packages, Chargent orders, Chargent base, and Chargent anywhere. For step four, we'll set up the community user profile. Set up a profile for a partner community user with the following permissions. For object settings, accounts should be set to read, create, and edit. For charge and orders, it should also be set to read, create, and edit. For contacts, also set to read, create, and edit. And for leads, also set to read, create, and edit. And finally, for opportunities, set to read, create, and edit as well. Step five, create the community. You will now set up your community, the workspaces. The administration settings and preferences should be set as follows. For settings, the status should be set to active. And for preferences, the record ownership default owner should be set to Happy Chargent Customer. The members should be the system administrator and the partner community user. Step six, use the builder. And now the fun part. Use the builder to create menus and pages. For the navigation menu, add the menu item, rename accounts, customers, set the type to Salesforce object, set the object to equal account, and set the default list view to equal my accounts. Next, add the menu item leads. Set the type to equal Salesforce object, set the object to equal lead, and set the default list view to equal all open leads. Next, add the menu item and rename opportunities or deals. Set the type to equal the Salesforce object, set the object to equal opportunity, and set the default list view to equal my opportunities. Next, add the menu item charge and orders. The type should be set to Salesforce object, the object should be set to charge and order, and the default list view set to all. Step seven, add charge it. Using the charge it anywhere component, you will add payments capabilities to the community that you have built. For the pages and find opportunity details, page variations, create the new page variation opportunity detail. Make it the default. Under the properties, change the layout to be set up for two columns with a two to one ratio. Next, add the charge of anywhere to the opportunity detail page. For the configuration, set the gateway ID for the desired payment gateway. Add the default charge amount. The opportunity amount field will work, for example. Limit the payment request contacts to true. If you missed any of the steps or settings, consult the page in our documentation for easy reference. And now it is time to test. You should log in as a partner community user to make sure everything works as expected, since as the system administrator, you will have access to things that regular partner community users will not. And now check out this next video. My name is Stacy, and at Chargent, we're dedicated to helping Salesforce customers like you to keep your payments simple. And remember, we're always here to help.